بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم In lecture 24 of plant metabolism, we will be studying sulfur metabolism. How sulfur is changed from one form to another form, then we will discuss about its uh, role a little bit and then uh, sulfur toxicity and its symptom in plant species. Sulfur is an essential macronutrient required for plant growth. It is a secondary plant nutrient. The primary nutrients are nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium. We have discussed in details nitrogen and phosphorus, their roles in plants, their physiology and their metabolism in previous lectures. Calcium sulfur and magnesium are considered as secondary prime secondary plant nutrients and they are macronutrients sulfur is primarily used used to synthesize cysteine methionine and numerous essential and secondary metabolites derived from amino acids sulfate enters a plant primarily through the roots by way of an active uptake mechanism Gaseous sulfur dioxide readily enters the leaves where it is assimilated to reach the chloroplast where most of the reduction to sulfide take place. A sulfate molecule must traverse at least three membrane systems, the plasma membrane of root cell and the soil plant interface. The plasma membranes of internal cells involved in transport and the chloroplast membranes. Sulfate is assimilated into organic molecule in one of two oxidation states. Most sulfur is reduced to sulfide by the multi-step process. Sulfate uptake and transport. The phenotype of sulfate starvation typically consists of pale green young leaves while mature leaves remain dark green. In nitrogen, we studied that the old leaves become yellower during nitrogen deficiency. However, in sulfur deficiency, young leaves become pale green while mature leaves remain dark green. This phenomena is different from the symptoms of nitrogen and phosphate deficiency where young leaves remain green due to support by degrading mature leaves and has been interpreted as an inefficient activation of cellular sulfate pools. Plant can also metabolize sulfur dioxide taken up in gaseous form through their stomata. Nonetheless, prolonged exposure more than 8 hours to high atmospheric concentration greater than 0.3 parts per million of sulfur oxide causes extensive tissue damage because of the formulation of sulfuric acid. Sulfur assimilated in leaves is exported via the phloem to sites of protein synthesis, shoot and root apices and fruits mainly as glutathione. The expression pattern of the three genes nicely fit assumptions summarized from earlier observation the high affinity transporters are root specified and inducible by exogenous sulfate deficiency while the low affinity transporter messenger RNA is less abundant but present in roots and leaves. The later form is only slightly inducible in roots and is uh, repressed in leaves upon sulfate deprivation suggesting a functional function in cell to cell or intracellular transport it will be interesting to see whether other types of sulfate transporters exist to investigate the molecular basis of such essential processes as root uptake vascular loading and unloading and intracellular transport of sulfate the identification of the metabolites and the signal transduction pathway that mediates the transcriptional and post-transcriptional induction and repression of sulfate uptake in the observed tissue specific 
and developmental pattern will be crucial for understanding the regulation of sulfate assimilation. Plasma membrane transport in ionic sulfate uh, sulfate with negative charge is relatively abundant in the environment and serves as the primary sulfur source for plants. It is actively transported into roots where it can remain or be distributed to the other side. Transport into cell is mediated by plasma membrane localized hydrogen sulfate co-transporters that are driven by the electrochemical gradient established by the plasma membrane protein ATPase. Seven genes encoding sulfate transporters have been identified from Arabidopsis thaliana. You all know that Arab Arabidopsis thaliana is a model plant which is used for different plant studies. It is uh, it germinates easily and its uh, genome has been sequenced fully, fully and most of the plant experiment starts on Arabidopsis thaliana and then proceeds toward other plants. Transport into plastids Sulfate must be transported into plastids where reduction and most of assimilation takes place. Sulfide or thiosulfide are probably exported from plastids since isoenzymes for cysteine synthesis but not for sulfate reduction are localized outside of plastids. The nature of the plastid sulfate transporter has been the subject of much speculation but it has not been conclusively identified. So here uh, we learn that nature of plastic sulfate transporter is not very well understood and most of the happenings or most of the conclusion about these transporters are speculative and not clear yet. Sulfate activation in organic sulfate is chemically very stable and therefore has to be activated prior to reduction to sulfate or esterification with stable organic compounds. The enzyme ATP sulfilase catalyzes the formation of adenosine 5 and adenosine 5 phosphosulfate an energy rich mixed anhydride of phosphate and sulfate. Adenosine 5 phosphosulfate is an efficient inhibitor of ATP sulfilase, but the physiological significance of this possible feedback mechanism is unclear since APS is labile at cellular pH and its production is kinetically favorable as indicated by its equilibrium constant. To achieve substantial product formation, the equilibrium has to be pulled forward, but in organic phospho, phospho, sorry, in organic pyrophosphatase hydrolysis of the product, pyrophosphate alone is not sufficient. Sulfur assimilation. Sulfur is among the most versatile elements in living organisms. Disulfide bridges in proteins play structural and regulatory roles. Sulfur participates in electron transport through iron sulfur clusters. The catalytic sites of several enzymes and coenzymes such as urease and coenzyme A contain sulfur. Secondary metabolites compound that are not involved in primary pathway of growth and development that contain sulfur range from rhizobial node factors, antiseptic allene in garlic and anti-carcinogen sulforaphane in broccoli. The versatility of sulfur drivers drives in part of in part from the property that it shares with nitrogen multiple stable oxidation states. Consumption of APS by high affinity enzymes is required to pull substrate flow either by 
channeling into sulfate reduction or by a second ATP dependent activation which result in 3 phosphorylsin 5 phosphosulfate and is catalyzed by APS kinase. 3 phosphoadenosine 5 phosphosulfate serves as the preferred donor in sulfate transfer reactions for esterification of hydroxyl residues. Hence, animals are able to synthesize PAPS as well in donor tyrosine sulfation reactions. These organisms circumvent the thermodynamic implication of sulfate activation using a bifunctional PAPS synthetase to channel the intermediate APS. Recent cloning of cDNA from marine worm reaches Kaupo and rat revealed the existence of polypeptides with structural homology of APS kinase at their N terminus and to ATP sulfidase at their C terminus. A similar association of independent proteins may exist in plants. Sulfate reduction in plants The long held dogma concerning sulfate reduction stated that in plants APS is the substrate for this reaction and the enzymes APS sulfotransferase. For a number of reasons however the APS pathway in plants was not universally accepted despite years of research definitive evidence for the existence of APS stays was not forthcoming. One report of its purification from Iglena Graculus was confounded by the unreasonably low specific activity of the pure enzyme. Subsequently, another group reported that in vitro plants, APS kinase displays APS sulfotransferate activity as a site reaction. These results, combined with several physical similarity, prompted the, uh, prompted the idea that perhaps APS sulfotransferase is a kinetic object. In contrast to this uncertainty, it is widely believed that prokaryotes including cyanobacteria and fungi use PAPS 3 adenosine 5-phosphosulfate for sulfate reduction via the enzyme PAPS reductase. Recently, however, direct evidence was published by three independent groups confirming the existence of an APS-dependent pathway in plants. APS sulfotransferase cano isolating the enzyme from a marine microalga by maintaining high levels of ammonium sulfate throughout the purification procedure. The liability of APS stays and that it could be stabilized with high concentration of sulfate salts, but this finding was never incorporated into purification scheme as reflected by its name APS. SSTase was proposed to catalyze the transfer of sulfate from APS to thiol acceptor molecule forming thiosulfonate. The physiological acceptor was envisaged to be glutathione primarily because it is an efficient sub substrate and is the most abundant thiol in the chloroplast proma in which APS stays is localized. The algal enzyme shows a kinetic constant for glutathione of 0.6 mm micrometer, a value that is well below the physiological concentration in the stroma reported to be between 3 and 10 mmol. This is a key finding that supports much of the earlier works on these enzymes. For example, it has long been known that sulfide production from sulfate. Regulation of sulfur metabolism uh, it is of two kinds. Number one is rate limiting steps in sulfur pathways. Sulfate assimilation is regulated by sulfur status. When the amount of sulfur in the plant is low, many enzymes involved in sulfur acquisition and reduction are upregulated, incl including sulfate permease, ATP, sulfurylase, and APS reductase. Expressions of the gene encoding APS reductase is most closely correlated with sulfur stated and this enzyme is suspected to be a rate controlling enzyme for the pathway. 
there is also indication that ATP sulfilase may be limiting for sulfate uptake and assimilation because overexpression of the gene resulted in higher plant levels of both reduced and total sulfur. And other potentially lim limiting enzyme for cis formation may be serine acetyl transferase because overexpression in cytosol and blasted result in threefold and sixfold higher cis level respectively. The regulatory enzyme of GSH synthesis under unstressed condition is thought to be gamma gluta glutamyl synthetase under metal stress glutamyl synthetase activity is upregulated both at the transcriptional level and the enzyme activity level and GSH synthetase may become co-limiting uh, second regulation of sulfur metabolism in response to the environment as mentioned above, sulfur limitation induces sulfate uptake and assimilation at the transcriptional level with GSH and as an important signal molecule. While uptake and reduction of sulfur are enhanced under sulfur limitation, the synthesis of secondary S compounds, for example, sulfur ion is down regulated and secondary sulfur compounds such as glucosinolates are even broken down to provide sulfur for essential compounds. Sulfur limitation also affects ex expression of seed storage protein, the rate of photosynthesis and protein turnover. Conversely, when photosynthesis is reduced, sulfate assimilation is reduced as well. Accumulation of AMP and ADP were reported to inhibit ATP sulfurylase, offering a partial explanation of the mechanisms involved. The sulfur assimilation pathway is also regulated in coordination with nitrogen assimilation, and the ratio of reduced sulfur to reduced nitrogen is typically maintained at 1 ratio to 20. Reduced sulfur compounds activate the key enzyme of nitrogen reduction, nitrate reductase. Similarly, reduced nitrogen compounds stimulate the key enzymes of sulfur reduction, ATP sulfurylase. Methionine biosynthesis Methionine is generally regarded as a member of the aspartate family of amino acids. However, most of the metabolic functions of methionine are connected with its sulfur moiety. Prime example is the role of s -adeno methionine. SAM in numerous methyl transfer reaction and the observation that the cycle underlying ethylene biosynthesis essentially recover the meth methyl thio group but not the ammonia and carbon backbone of methionine. Cytate thionine synthase is exclusively plastic localized and catalyzes the first committed step of methionine synthesis in the formation of Cystathionine from O phosphohomocerine and cytosine. Regulation of methionine synthesis is connected to the other roots of the aspartate family at the metabolic level. At the branch point of the pathways, theronine synthase required SAM as an allosteric activator also act as an inhibitor of aspartate kinase at the entry of the pathway. Homocytosine is converted to methionine catalyzed by the enzyme methionine synthase. And this reaction so, uh, shows the conversion of homocytosine to methionine and this reaction is catalyzed by methionine synthase. Again, this slide shows the uh, methionine synthesis. Enzymes involved in methionine biosynthesis are aspartokinase, beta aspartate, semi -LD, LDHYDE dehydrogenase, homoserine dehydrogenase, homoserine O transkinylase, cystathionine synthase, cystathionine betalase, methionine synthase, and methyl transferase. 
मिथायोनिन बायोसेंसिस इनहिबिटर एल प्रॉप आर्गलाइल ग्लाइसिन प्रोड्यूस्ड ग्रोथ इनहिबिशन ऑफ एक्सेजनस मिथायोनिन एंड साइटाथायोनिन सेंथेस एक्टिविटी एल अमाइनो ethoxy vinyl glycine also produced growth inhibition and morphological change partially preventable by exogenous methionine l amino ethoxy vinyl glycine impairs the cleavage of cystathionine to homocysteine recycling of methionine sam is used in a wide variety of biological reactions and represents a major pathway of methionine metabolism the flux through methionine was analyzed in lama and it was determined that over 80% of methionine is metabolized into sam of which approximately 90% is used for transmethylation reactions the product of these methylation reaction in higher plant is sulfur adenosyl homocysteine is recycled to homocysteine by adenosyl homocysteinase prior to the reincorporation of a methyl group by methionine synthase and regeneration of the methionine molecule biosynthesis of glutathione gsh and gssh reduced and oxidized forms of glutathione respectively are readily interchangeable this tripeptide is the most dominant non protein thiol in plants and can play a role in regulating the uptake of sulfate ions by plant roots it is also a substrate for gshs transferases which are important for detoxification of xenobiotics and it is the precursor of phytochelatin peptide that enable plant cell to cope with heavy metals in the environment GSH is an abundant antioxidant in cells and supports redox buffering. The synthesis of GSH occurs in plasmids by a two-step reaction catalyzed by Y-glutamyl cysteine synthetase and GSH synthetase. Genes encoding both have been isolated from Arabidopsis. Exposure of plants to cadmium induces phytochelatin synthesis. This heavy metal chelator is synthesized from GSH by phytochelatin synthase and consists of repetitions of the Y-glutamyl cysteine dipeptide that terminates with the glycine. Mutants defective in phytochelatin synthesis are sensitive to heavy metals, whereas overexpression of Y-glutamyl cysteine synthase or GSH synthase in Brassica junsa allowed increased cadmium tolerance. Glutathione accumulates after excess feeding of sulfur compounds if the normal regulatory control mechanisms are circumvented, suggesting that glutathione function as a storage pool for excess cysteine. GSH is synthesized by glutamyl cysteine synthase and has been categorized from uh, nicotine and tobacco. This compound is condensed with glycine by glutathione synthesis from GSH. Ecological significance of hydrogen sulfide emission by plants. The emission of several volatile reduced sulfur gases such as H2O, H2S, COS, DMS, CS2, and methyl mercaptan from various plant species was determined in various experiments. From these volatile substances, hydrogen sulfide is one of the most important sulfur gases emitted by higher plants in response to an excess of sulfur soil applied sulfur fertilization and hydrogen sulfide emission of agricultural crops was not proven but it was shown in field experiment that sulfur fertilization and the sulfur nutritional status respectively had a significant effect on fungal infections in oil seed rape these findings underline the concept of sulfur induced resistance of plants hydrogen sulfide is highly fungi toxic and therefore a relationship between increasing hydrogen sulfide emission of plants and a higher resistance of crops against pests and this can be assumed sulfur dioxide sulfur oxide toxicity in plants major resources of sulfur dioxide are coal burning operation especially those providing electric power and spacing, space heating. 
Sulfur dioxide emission can also result from the burning of petroleum and the smelting of sulfur containing ores. Sulfur dioxide enters the leaves mainly through the stomata and the res resultant injury is classified as either acute or chronic. Acute injury is caused by absorption of high concentrations of sulfur dioxide in relatively short time. The symptom appears as two-sided lion that usually occur between the veins and occasionally along the margin of the leaf. The color of the necrotic area can vary from a light tan or near white to an orange red or brown depending on the time of year the plant species affected. Uh, you can see acute sulfur toxicity injury to the raspberry. The injury occurs between the veins and that the tissue nearest the veins remains healthy. Chronic injury is caused by long term absorption of sulfur dioxide at sub lethal concentrations. These symptoms appear as a yellowing or chlorosis of the leaf and occasionally as a bronzing on the under surface of the leaves. Some crop plants are generally considered susceptible to sulfur dioxide. These include alfalfa, barley, buckwheat, clover, oats, pumpkins, radish, spinach, squash, Swiss chard, and tobacco. Thank you very much.